Thank you for leading us today. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Absolutely. Good evening. Mr. Rickerman? Here. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Present. Mr. Badura? Here. Mr. Vaughn? Here. Mr. Davis? Here. Mayor Benjamin? Here. I know we have some of our young people um, still in transit here, but um, Mr. Tucker, uh, Ms. Osborne, and, and Mr. Jenkins, if he's here, would you, would you mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Come on. Come on, young leaders. On the microphone. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to ask Dr. Reed White from Jones Memorial Amy Zion Church, please bless us with an invocation. Pastor, how are you? May we pray. Most gracious God, we thank thee for the beauty of this day. We give thee thanks, O God, for this privilege and this opportunity to come together in this council meeting. We thank thee for the leadership of the mayor, all the councilmen, all the departments that represent this city. We realize, oh God, that we have gone through some challenging times, but yet, oh God, we realize that you are still in charge. Now, Lord, bless this gathering, guide each and every individual yes, sir. until we shall come together again. And we pray this prayer in your name. May we together say amen. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. White. Thank you. Um, I will make one uh, change to the uh, adoption of the agenda. I'll move item 30 up to after the consent agenda. Madam City Manager, is there a motion to uh, approve the agenda as adopted, as, a, as a amended? Mr. Mayor, I would also ask Sorry. that you all take item nine off of the consent agenda. Yes, ma'am. All right. Sounds good. I'm still on the agenda, but off the consent agenda. All right. Oh, I'm, yes. Mayor Benjamin, I'm, my apologies. I just got one additional note from staff um, for item. I'm not sure which item this is. Item ten. Um, let me read into the agenda for you the mentor and protege participants. Participation percentages for item 10 um, has been amended. Stutz and Williams LLC, a certified LBE, will be the mentor for this project and will perform grading and import of fill material at 80%, $630,000, 330, $633,000 of the total contract value. Hammerhead Utilities LLC of Columbia, South Carolina, will be the protege and will be providing clearing and erosion control services at 20%, 158,000 of the total contract value. And Mayor Benjamin, that um, concludes your changes for the consent agenda. A motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. A second, any discussion? Saying none, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Badura? Mr. Vine? Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Mayor Benjamin, I probably should have asked for any public input, sir, for the agenda items before we approve the consent. I don't think there were any. Keep moving. Just to right. put that on the record. And also, uh, Mayor, the approval of the minutes the for the approve. January 15th, 2019. Oh, Is there a second? Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Badura? Mm -hmm. Mr. Vine? Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Is there a motion to approve consent agenda items 10 as amended through 26? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All right. Seeing none, we move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Badura? Aye. Mr. Vine? Mr. Davis, Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Item 9. Item 9. Yes, right. sir. Council is asked to approve a contract for Capital City Ballpark demolition as requested by Columbia Water 
award to Carolina Wrecking Inc. in an amount not to exceed $136,500, which includes contingency funding. Carolina Wrecking Inc., a certified local business enterprise, is located in Columbia, South Carolina. So moved. Second. Discussion, Mr. Badura. Your microphone on, Mo. Make sure it's on. Just to uh, explain to the public exactly what's going on with the ballpark, I, I know we have a contingent contract on it, um, and just to um, be fair and, and open to the public, this money that we're using to demolition the ballpark, number one, is in our contract that we signed with Mr. Meyer. Number two, uh, it's the contingent money that he paid, non-refundable, that we're going to use to demolish the building. Correct. Correct. As part of the last negotiation with the extension of the contract, uh, it was there was a termination of the escrow funding, which allowed for us to use that for the demolition of this okay. structure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, move to the previous question. Kurt Calderell. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Badura? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 30, recognition of Angel Conwell, the Honorable Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin. Oh, this, is, uh, this is mine. I wanted to uh, take an opportunity to recognize uh, one of our great success stories. Um, some of you will see Angel and you'll do a double tape because you've seen her before uh, and you're just not sure where and then you're not sure why you might see her out of context in this chamber in um, what we will say is her hometown, although Orangeburg might have a little bit of uh, a little bit, of, a little bit, of, a little bit of claim to you. Uh, but Andrew Conwell is an accomplished uh, actress, Grace in the big screen and small screen. Um, so many talents, and she's a, 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 a wonderful example of uh, with, with faith and, and perseverance. And when you have, as you can tell, not just um, incredible uh, parents, but an entire community pouring into you what our young people can accomplish in, in this world. And I want to read this proclamation and then um, ask Ms. Conwell to um, address us. Um, whereas Ms. Angel Conwell was born on August 2nd, 1983 in Orangeburg, South Carolina to Brian Conwell and Sheila Leggett, and whereas at a young age, Ms. Conwell won countless awards locally for her acting and landed a role in August Wilson's highly acclaimed Fences before signing with Wilhelmina's Kids Division in New York at the age of 10. And whereas Ms. Conwell and her mother relocated to Los Angeles with enough funds to only last a few months, and on the, the day the two planned to return to Columbia, Ms. Conwell booked a role in the CBS pilot On Our Own, which led to her also landing the role of Meshach Taylor's daughter on CBS's Dave's World. And whereas Ms. Conwell starred in her first silver screen role when she was cast by John Singleton for the role of Kim and Baby Boy at the age of 17 and shortly after, began filming the Lionsgate comedic remake of The Wash, as well as MGM Soul Plane. And whereas Ms. Conwell has guest starred and recur recurred on dozens of hit television shows, such as y The Young and the Restless and Family Time, and whereas Ms. Conwell has represented the state of South Carolina and the Midlands region incredibly well as a successful entertainer and philanthropist, donating her time and talents to young people who are considering a career in the entertainment industry, and whereas the city of Columbia is delighted to recognize Ms. Conwell for her accomplishments and contributions to the community and wishes her the best in years to come. Now, therefore, I, Stephen K. Benjamin, Mayor of the City of Columbia, along with my fellow members of Columbia City Council, do hereby proclaim today, February 5th, 2019, to be Angel Conwell Day in the city of Columbia and urge our fellow citizens to recognize and participate in its observance. Angel. so much, Mayor Benjamin and City Council. I am very, very full of, of just joy, and I'm so grateful, honestly. Um, being in an industry that is so demanding, spiritually, mentally, and just demanding of your time, a lot of time actually can pass, and you realize that you haven't 
actually been recognized. You haven't even really recognized yourself, and which is fine, because to be honest, my reason for entering into the inter entertainment field was I felt it was healing. I wanted to help heal people through laughter, through telling stories, and I'm so grateful to God that that has happened, and there's still much more on the menu, still so many more things planned, but I definitely could not have done anything that I've done today without the support of my family and my loved ones, and just to be here and have the support of my city, it means so much, so, so, so much. And I'm used to working with a script, <laughs> you know, I'm used to working with a script. So speaking from the heart and the head at the same time can be, a, you know, it's a little funny for me. But I'm doing my best, I'm just so grateful, thank you. We're very proud of you. And it's so important that you, that you give people their flowers and, and you're, you're still on the rise. And we wanna encourage you to keep doing great things, to keep being a blessing to others, and know that your hometown is behind you all the way. All the way. All right. Thank you so much. All right, uh, Madam City Manager. Yes, sir, Mayor. Well, it is a night of recognition, a night of recognition, our hometown greats, I guess I'll say. So we have another special presentation, Mayor Benjamin, that we would like to make in honor of one of our own. Um, he doesn't know that we're doing this, although I think he, you know, you can't really fool him totally, you try, but it seems to be very difficult to get one over on our favorite fire chief, um, police, I'm, I'm sorry, fire chief Aubrey D. Jenkins with Columbia Richland Fire is celebrating 40 years of service. 40 Ooh, years. Yeah. Uh, Speak. 
speech. 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 Well, speech. We're gonna, we're gonna get, let him get his bearings and run a video. We have um, a PowerPoint. All right. So all right. Photos I get to say something? Not yet. Oh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We know you always read. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, jeez, look at you. Wow. Where's the hair? Where's the hair, Jesus? You know what I had on? Look at that picture right there, guys. Uh, that was skinny, though. You want to get in here? Love this game, Charlie. So I'm going to read the proclamation, all right, and then um, I like to say uh, something after that. Too. All right. <laughs> um, Whereas well, Chief Arbor Jenkins began his duties as fire chief of the Columbia Fire Department on July 20th, 2011, becoming the first the entity's first African American fire chief, and Whereas well, Chief Jenkins leads a department of 570 employees, including 130 volunteer firefighters across 32 stations, and Whereas well, prior to serving as fire chief. Chief Jenkins served as a firefighter from 1979 to 1984, as a relief fire equipment operator from 82 to 84, as a fire equipment operator from 84 to, 9 to 88, as fire captain from 88 to 93, as battalion chief from 1993 to 2005, and as deputy chief from 2005 to 2011. And whereas Chief Jenkins is a graduate of Oak Hill High School and earned a degree from Columbia Southern University in fire science, and whereas throughout his career, Chief Jenkins has earned certifications to become an emergency medical responder instructor, a South Carolina Fire Academy instructor, and an American Red Cross First Aid instructor. And whereas Chief Jenkins has earned numerous honors and awards, including becoming Columbia Fire Department's first and only fire chief to see, achieve a Class 1 ISO rating, which is recognized as the highest rating for local fire protection. And whereas Chief Jenkins was also named Columbia Firefighter of the Year and City Employee of the, of the Month, in addition to being the recipient of the 2007 Columbia Urban League Lincoln C. Jenkins Award, the Columbia, City of Columbia Lifesaver Award, the Volunteer of the Year Award, the Citizen of the Year Award, and a recognition award for his leadership in after-school programs, teaching first aid and safety tips to youth. And whereas Chief Jenkins serves as Chairman of the City of Columbia Grievance Committee and is an inductee of the Columbia Housing Authority Wall of Fame, and whereas Chief Jenkins is a member of the Progressive Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, where he serves as a deacon and chairman of the Brotherhood Department. And whereas Chief Jenkins is married to Mrs. Vernell Trapp Jenkins, and they are the proud parents of sons Emmanuel and Sheldon Jenkins. And whereas the City of Columbia is delighted to recognize Chief Jenkins for his service to the community and wishes him the very best in years to come. Now, therefore, I, Stephen K. Benjamin, Mayor of the City of Columbia, along with my fellow members of Columbia City Council, do hereby proclaim February 2019 to be Chief Arbor Jenkins Month in the City of Columbia and urge our fellow citizens yeah. to recognize and participate in this.
floor is yours, brother. One word, brother. Thankful. We are, we are truly thankful for you and the, and the man that you, that you are, and the leader you are uh, for us. So, I please. think this is probably the first time that I'm lost words. Y'all saw, y'all, y'all saw the picture of me and my brother walking down the street, me and my twin brother walking down the street, which is the mayor. I turned. <laughs> I, <laughs> see? <laughs> There's some, there's some resemblance. Uh, I, I, I moved the previous question. I, mean, <laughs> I, I told him if he put on my uniform and I put on his on on a suit with my red tie, we walked around the street. There's the mayor and he the fire chief. So, but anyway, um, I, this is an honor. Um, I'm really, I'm grateful and I'm thankful. Um, the Lord has really blessed me um, here at the city. 40 years. I, I never thought that it would, it would ever come to this. Uh, I remember when I first came, I never dreamed I'd be here that long. Um, this city has really been good to me. It really has. Um, I have no complaints. If I lost my job tonight, I can't complain because of what the city has done for me over 40 years. Um, I, have, I, have, I feel like I have the best fire department in the nation. As you can see on the wall, a bunch of firefighters back there. And I feel like I feel like they are the best, and I'm going to always brag on them because they do an awesome job. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to the, to you, Mayor, and the City Council, who has went beyond to support um, both me and our department. I'm extremely grateful to my boss, the City Manager, who has really supported us and been there for us, and we appreciate that. Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I mean, well, thank well, you. Well, in addition to this being Aubrey Jenkins Month, which I oh. think is, which I think is uh, appropriate. Wait a minute, one, one question. Is my Rolls Royce parked out there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't get a car. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we, you know, we have singular uh, honors, and we also, of course, wanted to give you the key to the city of Columbia, Aubrey. Wow. Very nice. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, as you all are assembling for the photo op, we want to give him his other oh, yeah. little surprise. Fire Chief Aubrey D. Jenkins, City of Columbia, South Carolina, 40 years of service, February 5th, 2019, with autographs and well wishes from myself and all of City Council. Mayor and Council. Yeah, <laughs> you got a walk, you can't ride,
Wild. Chief, where did he go? Come here, you're not far. Yeah, don't go far. I gotta say something, man. You don't have to stand here, I'll just say it. Um, I do wanna take this moment and, and from a fireman to another fireman, I wanna thank you for everything you do. You never quit working. For, 40, for eight years I've known you, you've never quit working. You always did the right thing. Uh, two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock, it doesn't matter. You're always there for the people. And we appreciate doing the right thing, and we appreciate all the hard work you've done for the city. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Please. Just remember, I got to go home tonight. <laughs> I didn't realize my I, they just snuck in on me today. They just were sneaking in on me. I really want to take the opportunity to thank my wife, Amen. Um, because you can't be in these positions for this long. And now have a good support from your wife. Amen. I mean, Amen. they toil with you. They allow you. <laughs> yeah, those two, three or four o'clock mornings, I had to leave my family. And I left my wife and my son. I want to thank both of them for just allowing me to do my job and support me all these years. So I just want to thank them publicly. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, I'm man. proud to call you a friend. I really am. Thank you. Mayor Benjamin, I am going to jump to item 29, special presentations um, by you for some very well-deserving yeah, young people, one of yeah. which is trying to get to a basketball game right, at uh, no, my daughter's school. She's over there cheer, trying to cheer for him, and he isn't okay. quite there yet. So. Perfect, perfect nexus. Um, uh, I think coming off of recognizing Ms. Conwell, recognizing 40 years of service by Aubrey. I mean, that, that's so um, uh, uncommon nowadays to see that level of service and continue <laughs> to rise and rise and rise. He continues to give. I want to take an opportunity to recognize uh, four uh, young people who are about to blaze their own trails. Uh, Mr. Elijah Jenkins, Ms. is it Tone? Tane? Tane? All right, Osborne. Uh, Mr. Ross Tucker and Mr. Harris, Mr. Robert Harris, uh, with certificates of achievement and um, a little bit of, of financial incentive to continue doing the great things that you all are doing. Uh, I'll, I'll have these applications up here uh, for the Dreamkeeper Scholarship for anyone who wants to uh, review them. But I will tell you this, the future in Columbia, South Carolina, and in uh, this great country is bright. These, um, these academic records, this focus on, on leadership, and most importantly, um, at your young ages, a commitment to service is, is so important. Recognizing that we've all been given some incredible opportunities because of the work of our parents and our grandparents and, and so many people whose names we'll never know. And the fact that you all are, are, are at this young age enlightened enough to realize that you have a responsibility to help and lead in this community is something we wanted to celebrate. So um, we have certificates of achievement for all four of you. I want to ask you to come up and I also want to present you uh, with a check uh, from uh, the City of Columbia. Please. And what time is the basketball game? <laughs> Dad, where's your big camera? I only see you at the games with the big one. And you show up here tonight with your phone?
Cardinal Newman. He's been known to dunk the ball a couple times. Who y'all playing? Oh, you got to win that game. Whip him. Got to whip him. Hey, let him go. He's got to win. He's got to get ready. And, and young people, we know you have homework, and we want these grades. I'm looking at these transcripts. As you, as you may have heard in the state of the city, your, your transcripts are much better than mine were uh, uh, in, in high school. Keep your grades up. Keep doing great things, all right? That's Steve. All right. Was that? The bad, bad Stevie. Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> you should have never told us that one. <laughs> all right, Madam City Manager. Mr. Mayor, um, an additional presentation um, that's really in line with the others is a city light presentation. Um, as you all know, I take honor in doing these for many of our exceptional employees at the City of Columbia. On Saturday, January 19th, 2019, Columbia police officers responded to a three vehicle collision at Bluff Road and I-77. Columbia recruit firefighter Brandon Zinn was involved in the collision. He was struck by an impaired motorist and was left in critical condition. Corporal Justin Pogue was one of the first to arrive on the scene and immediately started to apply an issue tourniquet to Brandon's leg wound trying to stop the bleeding. Richland County EMS arrived and transported Brandon to the hospital where he underwent successful life-saving surgery. Earlier that afternoon, both Richland County EMS and Palmetto Health Richland staff contacted CPD to acknowledge Corporal Pope's life-saving actions. It was stated that without the quick application of the tourniquet to the leg wound, recruit firefighter Zinn would not have been able to survive his injuries. Please join me in commending Corporal Justin Pope for his heroic life-saving actions. Is, I, I love I love what you do with City Light, uh, Teresa. Are you, you gonna say something, Chief? Please. Since Aubrey's done all the talking today, I gotta. <laughs> this is not this is not an equal time moment. And March is Women's History Month. You can't have March. So. <laughs> maybe, maybe in about thirty-five more years. <laughs> I'll take thirty seconds to first say um, it's an honor and a privilege to work with you every day, Aubrey. Um, it truly is. We're lucky to have you. Um, Justin Pogue, just to tell you a little bit about him, um, he's been with the police department since 2009, but I had the privilege of promoting him to corporal a little over a year ago. He is one of many officers that has been trained with tactical first aid. They carry Narcan, which is an opioid reversal um, agent that is for them to save someone's life. And um, he's had the training with this tourniquet and it was of no surprise whatsoever to us to see him perform um, in such a heroic way. Um, it's, it's what we do and it's, it's what he does every day. He's uh, got a tremendous uh, attitude. He works in a great region. Uh, they're here to uh, support him. Um, he's an upcoming leader in our department and um, it's, uh, it's what it's all about. It's, it's uh, service before self. And um, I'm so glad he was recognized for this. Absolutely. And I'm glad that uh, Brandon is recovering. I know he's got a long recovery ahead, but uh, um, we saved a life. And um, um, I got a wonderful letter from his mother. Um, and the, uh, oftentimes things aren't as personal like that. And uh, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to lead young men like him. And, um, and I'm very proud of you. Congratulations. Good job. All right.
It's important, it's important that we don't need Hollywood, uh, that heroes walk among us every single day. And, uh, and Corporal, thank you for your, your leadership and your, and, your, and your service. Thank you so much. Um, Madam City Manager. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. We will move into a period of resolutions with one resolution number R2019-005, the release and abandonment of a five-foot portion of the city's existing 30-foot water line. So moved. Basement. Second. Any discussion? With the previous question, Kirk Colorado. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Bedora? Aye. Mr. Vine? Mr. Davis? Aye. And Mayor Benjamin? Ordinances first reading, item 32, ordinance number 2019-011, amending the 1998 Code of Ordinances of the City of Columbia, South Carolina, Chapter 14, Offenses and Miscellaneous Provisions. Motion. Second. 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 Discussion with the previous question. Court call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Badura? Aye. Mr. Vine? Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Other matters, item 33, council is asked to approve the installation of one speed hump on Shirley Street in the Melrose so Heights move. neighborhood. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Seeing none, to move with the previous question. Clerk call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Badura? Aye. Mr. Vine? Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 34, the Columbia Housing Authority, Authority Allen Benedict Court update. And Mayor Benjamin, um, we're happy to provide any updates um, well, as related I to the I think I'm, I'm going to take a, a, a moment just to thank uh, Chief Holbrook and Chief Jenkins for yes, the very sir. comprehensive report made to the community uh, yesterday of their ongoing uh, work um, and um, um, make it clear we fully support that work, Madam City Manager. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to yield to Mr. McDowell uh, for a moment of personal privilege and a, and a motion. Mr. Mayor, and of course, let me just say uh, an additional personal word. There are persons in the chamber tonight who were some of our first responders in addition to Chief Jenkins, code enforcement, and police. There are persons in congregations tonight and I just would personally like to see them stand. <laughs> Reverend McDowell, I want to say, but absolutely, Regina, you as well. Just the the. Why didn't uh, you stand, Regina? Stand, <laughs> delay. <laughs> Thank you. Just right, and, and Reverend McDowell, and, um, just to say thank you for your incredible leadership in helping uh, with the humanitarian response, which, which is something, quite frankly, you do if you were not the, the city councilman, uh, just as a, as a leader in this community helping meet the needs of the displaced residents of, of Allen Benedict Court. Um, your leadership is from stalwart, and we want to, we want to thank you uh, for, for your, your leadership there. I, 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 I know you have a motion uh, to, that reflects the sense of, of, of counsel that you'd like to make, but I want to thank all of our colleagues up here. Uh, we, we all want to make sure that the right thing is done, that, that this matter is properly investigated, and that, um, uh, that there's accountability at the end uh, of, of the investigation. <clears throat> um, our efforts yesterday were, were purely to make sure that every step along the way as we can, we're going to ensure that there's a transparent accounting of, of, of everything that's occurred. We commit to that. Ms. McDowell? Yes, I present this motion, Mayor. I move that we fully support the independent investigation by the Columbia Police Department, supported by the Columbia Fire Department and the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division in consultation with the Circuit Solicitor and HUD Office of Inspector General and to the events that led to the deaths of two of our citizens, Mr. Calvin Witherspoon and Mr. Derek Roper. Is there a second? Second. second. All right, is there any discussion? Move the previous question, clerk call the roll. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Are there any matters for council uh, committee reports or referrals? Uh, are there, um, we have a few citizens who signed up to speak. 
Um, uh, I believe so that's uh, Ms. Ms. Wiley, Ms. Diane Wiley, um, Dr. White, I'm not sure if you're going to speak or not, or you just signed up in attendance, and Ms. Wiley will be f um, followed by uh, Mr. Reggie Solis. Uh, good afternoon. I was sorry to hear about what happened at uh, Allen Benedict Court. It, I had just left there because I go to that church, and I, you know, I had smelled the smell, but I you know, wasn't thinking that that would be the, th the case. But I was sorry to hear that. But my, my issue is, have y'all looked at the other residents? Because we go to Reed Street to deliver food, and that place looked terrible. It really looked terrible, the high rise. And the Marion Street looked bad, too. And, and it, what, what I'm up here to say, don't let these things go down before we get it solved. Because that could have been me or you out there living like that. And it is me living like that now, because like I said, I've been out of my house, me and my husband, ever since uh, 2015. I got snakes in my house now. And uh, my issue, too, I need somebody to tell, come to our meeting the second Thursday of this month to explain to some of our neighbors what's going on, because I, I don't know what to tell them now. And Mr. McDowell, Council McDowell, know that Ms. Jones' house, the backyard, is corroding. Mine's is gone. You know, it's really, it, it's really bad. And I have a sick husband, and I'm tired now. That's why y'all hadn't seen me. I had to give myself a break. I had to give myself a break from this city council because I felt like I'm not doing anything. And I will not be the president of Belvedere and not have a say-so what's going on in my neighborhood. You know, I don't, I don't have no answer now. I got two neighbors just moved out this week because of the, the uh, ditches. They said they're tired. So I don't, I don't know what to tell them. I, I advise y'all to come and tell my neighbors at 6 o'clock Thursday because they're going to be asking me what to do. I don't know what to do. And I'm tired now. I'm tired. I call him every day. Every day. But I had to take a break. Since this has happened, and I email you all, my husband got sick. It took them 45 minutes to, just to get 15 miles to Hartsville. And that, you know, he could have died. You know, when I'm five miles, five minutes away if I was living in Columbia. So I just want to address this, and I'm going to keep coming back. I gave myself a break now. I'm back full force. I'm going to be here every meeting. I have to come and stay with somebody, but I'm gonna be here every meet because I want to know what's going on. And that meeting that that man had today, he didn't uh, ask those questions in those meetings. The, that early meeting today, those questions we didn't have that. We didn't have that. I told John, you neglect our neighborhoods, and we're tired now. If I have to be up here by myself, I will, because I, I want the news reporters to know two nine two zero three and four need some help, need really some help. That's all I have to say. And y'all doing a good job, but come in our neighborhood and see what we're doing. We're doing, we got our grocery store started. This Saturday, every other Saturday until it get warm, we're gonna do every Saturday. Mm -hmm. That's right. We'll be on Truman Street. We're gonna have our own grocery store. We're gonna own, we got good members. I'll be out there every Saturday now, trying to get the business going. That's right. But I need to be back in my home. I'm tired. Thank you. Right, thank you, Ms. Wallen. Thank you. Mr. Solis. Uh, good evening again to all the members of the City Council. I'm back again. I hope all of you are doing well. As I've said before, I appreciate the council time, and I am here again. You know the issues I brought to you before. We, although I do want to let you know we had the pleasure of having a, a Columbia police officer to attend our homeless helping homeless meeting recently. And he did let us know as far as the items that are being seized by the police are held for 90 days and they can be, if they are identified properly, retrieved from there. So we're going to let the people know about that. Um, but tonight, I brought something new that I'd like to read to you. 
This comes from the South Carolina Code of Laws, uh, unannotated. Title 47, Animals, Livestock, and Poultry, Chapter 1, Cruelty to Animals, Section 47-1-40. Ill treatment of animals generally, penalties. A, a person who knowingly or intentionally overloads, overdrives, overworks, or ill treats an animal deprives an animal of unnecessary sustenance or shelter, inflicts unnecessary pain or suffering upon an animal, or by omission or commission, knowingly or intentionally causes these acts, is guilty of a misdemeanor and upon conviction must be punished by imprisonment not exceeding 90 days or by fine not less than 100 nor more than $1,000, or both for a first offense, or by imprisonment not exceeding two years, or by a fine not exceeding $2,000, or both for a second or subsequent offense. Section 47-1-70, abandonment of animals, penalties, hunting dogs accepted. A a, a person may not abandon an animal as used for this section, abandonment is defined as deserting, forsaking, or intending to give up absolutely an animal without securing another owner or without providing the necessities of life. Necessities of life includes adequate water, which means constant access to a clean supply, fresh and potable water provided in a suitable manner for the species. Two, adequate food, which means provision as suitable interviews, intervals of wholesome foodstuffs suitable for the species and age, sufficient to maintain a reasonable level of nutrition to allow for proper growth and weight. Three, adequate shelter, which means shelter that is reasonably may be expected to protect the animal from physical suffering or impairment of due health due to exposure to the elements or adverse weather. B, a person who violates the section is guilty of a misdemeanor and upon conviction must be fined no less than 200 nor more than $500 or imprisonment for not more than 30 days or both. Offenses under this section must be tried in the magistrates or municipal court. Mr. Solis, uh, time's up. You, you, is What's, you want to make sure we're aware of the statute, or what, what's well, the point? The question is, how can we get in trouble for treating our animals this way when we don't get in trouble for treating fellow human beings this way? Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Mr. Bill Shanahan. Hey, Bill, how are you? Yeah. Good to see you, Absolutely. Bill. <laughs> yes, I've known a number of you over the years, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. I was, I am the co-owner of the Blowfish Baseball Club. My wife and I, Vicki, own the team, and we played a number of years at Capital City Stadium. And I was also the general manager of the Bombers back in the 90s, and before that, the Columbia Mets. And I got a call yesterday from the state saying that, you know, uh, it was going to be torn down. Now, I've known that for quite a while, and uh, you know that it was going to be uh, demolished. Um, and um, I just have a, a couple of questions that I, I would like to pose. In many ballparks across the country that have less history of baseball Hall of Famers that have played at their stadiums, when they tear down the stadium, before they do, they give the fans, the citizens, an opportunity to maybe go through it one more time. Uh, and the second part of the question is, also, there's the opportunity to purchase the old seats in the ballpark, because I just was wondering what's happening in that. There's other things in the ballpark that have great history, maybe not to everybody, but many baseball fans over the last nearly 90 years. So I'm just wondering what would be the opportunity for that. Mm -hmm. And um, just a lot of great history. And um, absolutely. And 
We need to move on into the future, mm -hmm. but we can't forget sure. the great history of baseball absolutely. there. Absolutely. I know all of us have some great memories there. I can only imagine how they pale in comparison to ones that you've had there, uh, Bill. Um, have we spent some time, Teresa? Um, I, I know that obviously um, mitigating the, the challenges with the property are, are a priority in the interest of, 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 of safety. Uh, but um, if we can work out something to accommodate um, some salvage of, of, of memorabilia and, and, and the like and, and, and limited access, can we? Um, She's going to sell it on eBay to make up yeah. the budget deficit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know how not much. But. But can we but can we work? I mean, well, Bill, Bill's 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 in a unique position. Like there are maybe just a handful of other people who are intimate as intimate with the property. Can we figure that out? And, and absolutely, okay. I think this was a first step, Mr. Shanahan, yeah. to get this yeah. on council's agenda to move forward with the demolition, yeah. which is necessary, and you understand oh, that. We, but we, we also that. we absolutely. also want to uh, certainly um, you know be cognizant mm -hmm. of any memories that can be kept by others. So we'll work with you on that. Thank you so much. And um, one last thing, and I have no problem helping if you want. It would be wonderful because of the history. I mean, Barney Dreyfus, <coughs> the Pittsburgh Pirates owner in 1920, who's in the Hall of Fame, built that, built that field. Hank Aaron oh, yeah. played his last minor league game ever there. Frank Robinson with the Reds. Is there a way I would be happy to help have a monument on the site, so for decades to come, people can see and read and hear about the great history of baseball and wonderful music as Hootie and the Blowfish played their homecoming reunion tour in 1993 at that ballpark in front of 11,000 people. So there's a lot of history sure. at that ballpark. I'd love to work, work with you on that. Awesome. Let's do it. Great idea. Great teamwork makes the dream work. God bless you all. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Randy Roberts. I think that's it. No other citizens have signed up to speak. Um, I do have uh, two announcements. Um, one, uh, there's a vacancy of the Midlands Authority for Convention, Sports, and Tourism. Uh, we will um, post that vacancy uh, wide uh, for citizens to apply for that vacancy. And there are two um, positions coming up in the Columbia Housing Authority Board, uh, um, expired terms, uh, that we also will post immediately uh, for a period of two weeks to um, uh, hopefully get a, a, a wide selection of citizens who might fill those vacancies. Uh, that's it. Um, Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Back. Move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Godora? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye.